Hudson's Daikaiju Managatari is yet another in the long line of great 16-bit RPGs lost on Western audiences. With its swift pace, simple yet effective gameplay, and wondrous story, it's quickly become one of my favorite RPGs of all time. While it may not reinvent the wheel that Dragon Quest set in stone, it certainly delivers on a fully-fledged, fun RPG experience. Our story revolves around the world of Shell Dorado, in which a mysterious beam of energy ascends into space, calling upon a massive meteor that crashes into the ocean. This causes a tsunami that wipes out many towns in the land, and with it comes a mysterious alien army that is abducting many town folk. Talk about a bad day. Shortly after, the small village of the Fire Shell calls upon an ancient hero, and you're tasked with saving the world from Fat Badger and whoever else might be pulling the strings behind the scenes. Not only that, but you must gather the element shells by beating the various elemental dragons to prove yourself worthy. While other RPGs of the time were adding more and more gameplay elements, what I truly adore about Daikaiju Managatari is how much it reminds me of the simplicity of Final Fantasy 1. Go to this village and do this, then go to another village and help them out of whatever jam they're in. And to some that may be a turnoff, but for myself, I enjoy a plain story that has me running errands for various villages and characters. That for me is what evokes the true feeling of adventuring through a large mystic world in a game like this. It also reminds me a bit of Dragon Quest III, as upon arriving at the second village, you'll be met with the opportunity to pick your party members, which is a seldomly used trope in RPGs that I've loved ever since I played the GBA remake of Final Fantasy I. It's such an underrated feature that really adds to the D&D feel that I crave from the genre. And thankfully, this game doesn't disappoint as you have your typical heavies and spellcasters to round out your small guild of adventurers. Daikaiju Managatari takes its stride from the likes of Mystic Quest, as you'll never be hung up on an obnoxiously long dungeon or town as neither tend to overstay their welcome. As a matter of fact, most are quite swift and to the point, and in my book, that's a plus. I'm not one who likes to be held up by long cantankerous dungeons plagued by endless random encounters. And while the encounters still remain, gone is the gritty fat of wandering aimlessly in places like the perilous mountains full of trolls, or the sunken caverns run amok with ghosts of the sea and other gelatinous creatures. Instead, you'll find yourself making great pace through the frozen tundras of Blizzaland, or sailing the great blue sea in search of the volcanic island of Pegu to attain yet another precious element shell. On the topic of random encounters, Battles are standard fare for the genre, as you're left to rely on normal attacks and spellcasting to do the trick. While the combat is rudimentary, even when I was mashing through battles, it never became unbearably dull. That being said, don't expect it to set your world on fire. Although, I do find the addition of techniques a refreshing concept. Your character will learn harder-hitting attacks, known as techniques, that can lay out bigger and tougher foes at no cost of MP, but sometimes HP. The only requirement is that you learn them, which is simply done by leveling up. With leveling in mind, the game requires very little grinding and the little that needs to be done can be accomplished outside of many small villages that will heal you for free. But as a quick side note, I highly recommend taking advantage of the copious amounts of XP that Zenum's respawning guards give out at his mansion. Along your journey, you'll encounter and even save many useful friends, the likes of Quick, who will help you scale walls with rope, an orc who will lob rocks out of your way, and can you believe Earthbound isn't the only SNES RPG with a character named Pooh? Of course, you and your friends will be tasked with many quests to further your journey, such as collecting special herbs from the forest to make lightning rods to get you through the stormy mountains, finding a special metal to craft a sword to free villagers from alien cocoons, and wandering through Blizzaland to get the Gnome King's medicine. By the way, to save yourself from backtracking through half of the game during this quest, be sure to buy the eye drops in the first village, Prickly, and the Dragon Wing in Bridgetown. I had to learn this the hard way, then I found out I had a warp spell not long after, because I'm an idiot. With towns in mind, you'll visit many along your adventure which will have your typical accommodations like inns, most of which are free or around 10 gold, and weapons and item shops to upgrade your equipment and snag some goodies. You'll also have hospitals to cure your group of certain annoying status effects like sickness or poison. Surprisingly enough, there's a bit of SimCity sprinkled into this game, as you have the opportunity to create your own town and furnish it with whatever buildings and businesses you'd like. This is entirely optional, but it's a neat choice that I'm sure many of you will have fun with. 
I have to admit the overall graphics don't quite grab your attention, but the many battle backgrounds and foes that accompany them certainly do. The animation style of the fights are gorgeously pronounced as everything pops with character and color. And I can't be the only one who thinks they have a very Akira Toriyama style to them. I mean, look at some of these designs, they look like they could be alternate universe DBZ characters. Anyways, spells and special techniques also come through with stellar appeal and animation. The one downside is that the few bosses you have to pillage throughout the game aren't nearly as gargantuan or as intimidating as I would like them to be, but I can let that slide as results get slightly better in the late game. Moving on to music, some of it is quite good at nailing that adventurous feeling with grandiose strings and bombastic drums, while other tracks take on a more offbeat style reminiscent of something you'd find on Earthbound soundtrack. Overall, I think the OST is good, but many other SNES RPGs topple this one in the sound department. While Daikaiju Monogatari might not be the most inventive or amazing RPG on the system, there's certainly something about its candor that is wholly enjoyable. I don't have to take the time to learn some complicated crafting system, nor do I have to rack my brain over some puzzle deep within an hour-long dungeon. Instead, I can briskly make my way through caves and plains on my way to the next village in peril, all while stomping baddies along the way. If you're an RPG snob, this one probably isn't going to be your cup of tea. But if you're looking for a more casual experience, then I would consider giving this game a go. And with a Japanese copy fetching you less than most candy bars, and the fan translated repro going for around $30, you can't go wrong. So next time you're looking for an RPG that harkens back to the days of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, look no further than Daikaiju Managatari. <laughs>